So our next artist is Kathleen Far S. Faros, and she's inspired and creates work about the human condition and spirit, idiomatic expressions, and surrealist juxtapositions of juxtapositions of imagery with flora and fauna. That's a, I should do better at reading that sentence. Um, Concepts drive her art, whether it is 3D in clay or found objects or 2D in acrylic or printmaking. Her art expresses personal and social emotions, which are sometimes soulful and sometimes humorous. Hi, Kathleen. Hello, how are you? Good, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, so what can you tell me about your current body of work? Um, I'm currently working um, with sculpture and with um, with found art, like I do, and but I'm also working on 2D surfaces. So I'm creating sculptural elements on 2D surfaces, and that's one of the things that have come out of this, you know, this whole COVID COVID thing too. Um, so in fact, behind me, I, I set up a little uh, mock-up of a, of a studio in the house because we have Wi-Fi here and not in our studio in Midtown. Um, and, uh, there's a piece behind me and it actually was fish, um, an aerial view, but there's dimension coming out of it because I always have that aspect and I'm using paper clay in order to do that. So that's something a little bit different as well as, um, you know, working on that. And then as far as current body, I'm working on that one. And I'm also, uh, working on a series that I started last year and it's come back where, um, the Tin Man Grows His Own Heart. And I had done a, a two-dimensional with uh, 3D clay um, on it. And so I'm doing some of those, and then I'm doing some dimensional pieces on, on that too, you know, which is enjoyable. Okay. Um, so you've told us a little bit about the materials you're using. How do you come up with these ideas? What's your process like? Um, process starting with the with the inspiration um where ideas are everywhere you know they're you know whether we're driving down the road and sometimes you see a billboard or you read a poem or you read literature um you know I, and i i do a lot with the like social you know um idioms and things like that where plays on words um all of that so i start with those ideas and sometimes those ideas come because when you're shopping and when you sculpt, you happen to go to junk places and you go to different yards and you find pieces and you think, oh, this is perfect. And so sometimes with the process, it starts with, um, it, with a piece, you know, like I have some pieces from the bakery that I'm doing a portraiture, you know, piece with. Um, so that it works that way. Now, as far as the process goes, if I'm doing um, ceramic clay, um, you know, or I'm doing you know, found art assemblage, you know, or even doing the 2D with the sculptural elements. Um, I always start with the inspiration and the concept and I always design things with my sketchbook. I always have lots of ideas and then I do a maquette if I'm working on my clay or even some of the other pieces and then I go into the, you know, into the other areas. And sometimes with some of my pieces, actually, um, I've worked on them, I've displayed them. And as I look at it, you know, a month down the way, if it's in the studio, I, I change it, you know, it evolves because the art, you know, that's part of it. The art speaks to you. You know, if you're doing clay, of course you're forming and it really does speak to you. Um, and, and the other pieces do too. So Anyway, that's the, the process. Oh, that's music to my ears. I'm always so thrilled when an artist says they, they draw things out in their sketchbook first. Um, I know yeah. that's not every yeah. person's process, but it's hard to get students to understand the, the value of sketching something out. Mm -hmm. and, you know, that you can save time, materials, and money if you just kind of spend a few minutes with a pencil on a piece of paper. Yeah, um, yeah. And color. And I, I try to add, you know, color to mine, too, to see... For instance, I'll, I'll be focused on the, the Tin Man. When I was doing the Tin Man series and I um, have a lot of sketches, you know, where some of it I had had with cool colors and the blues and, and things and the others I had with the oranges. Well, it was really um, a very good idea to sketch that first <laughs> and then to, you know, to do it in a small scale <laughs> instead of the large. And just like with clay, you know, you, you sketch in clay when you do a maquette. 
you know, but I always, even with the clay too, of course I sketch in the sketchbook and then I do the maquette and add the color and you, you do it. Like you said, it does save a lot of money and it saves time and you, you know, you have more folks that way. Yeah. I mean, not everything's sketchable, but what is, if, if it's Absolutely. sketchable, let's try to sketch it. Um, yeah. So what's your favorite project or commission that you have uh, done in the past couple of years? Sounds like you've had some work. I, I have had some work. Um, I, the one that I just mentioned, the Tin Man, the, and that, that's been enjoyable. Um, the one behind me that I'm working on, um, the inspiration was actually from a fish market and looking um, more of an aerial view down with fish and fish kind of swirling around and swirling around, of course, um, those fish are um, for consumption, so they're already gone. And, you know, with mine, I had them, it evolved and I had them coming out. And that's that's been fun. Um, one of the really fun things that I have done out, which isn't exactly my style, but working on a mural um, with Molecules Montoya and different people, there was a there was a mural and it was it was a lot of um, it was rewarding. It was a lot of fun. It's very different, you know, because sometimes you go out of your comfort zone and you do, you know, you do things. And so that's been, you know, that's been enjoyable too. Is there a place where and people can see that? Oh, excuse me. Where is that mural at? Like if someone wanted to see that? Um, there's a mural, it's in Vacaville. There was a mural in Vacaville. It was a memorial uh, mural for an educator. And, uh, and then it was sketched and worked on. So then that was, that was fun. It was, it was, it was nice collaboration with people and with different artists. Um, how has your practice changed due to COVID? Has anything in your in your art making changed because of this pandemic? It's, it it has changed. Um, for me, I happen to be in different areas. I have a home studio in Camino, um, but I'm also in Benicia a lot. And so when you're divided in areas, you're you know have art will travel. And so sometimes you you have to you have your idea and your inspiration, and you have to hone it down to where, you know, where I'm going to be. My home studio is fine. And the arts, where I'm at, I'm at the art studios on Midtown on I Street. And um, I've only just started going back there, you know, as far as that. So it, it has changed. And what's really changed for all of us is in Sacramento, we have had the opportunity with Second Saturdays, you know, and Second Saturdays, we really get to see a lot of people and encourage the art. And, um, the last art show that we had, um, you know, that I was part of was January. I was in a kickoff show at the art studios and, you know, we had this whole theme of visions and 2020 and look where we're going, you know, all these positive things. Right. Right. <laughs> and, and that was really the last, you know, the last one. And then there was one more after that. So that changed a lot and in going into the galleries and all, um, what has changed for the positive is all of the opportunities, all of the online opportunities that, you know, with some of those were adept at and others were becoming adept, you know, and getting better and better at that. And there are a lot of opportunities. It's just like what's going on here and uh, other galleries that I'm in, involved with that it's online. And there's a lot of webinars. There's there are a lot of things going on in the positive too. So it has definitely changed. Yeah, I was thinking about that last night, that this is actually, even though it was an unusual idea to think about doing the open studios virtually, and, and it was hard for me to imagine what it was like, I think it has been an opportunity for a lot of artists in this community to get up to speed on how to promote themselves in this platform or, or just through digital media. And that's really a gift. I mean, I know it was a pain in the butt. It was yes. a big learning curve for a lot of people, but I think we're all going to be better off for it. Uh, we'll have more opportunity because of this uh, format. So I think that that's kind of exciting. I'm also always- it was, we, about, Yeah, uh, no, sorry, absolutely. Um, you know, we've talked about this, the studio partners and I have talked about this and um, it is pushing us, you know, because like I said, some of it we were adept with and others, you know, I, it's like get on board and not quite there, but, you know, but we're working on it. <laughs> so. I think if you're here, you get an A plus, you're doing it. You're doing the thing. <laughs> Um, I think we have time for another question. Um, let's see, I'm going to pick a favorite question here because tell us like how, what started you making art? How long have you been creating art? Like what's that journey been like? It, um, it has been a journey since I was little. 
I mean, really little. I always said I wanted to be an artist and probably some of that was my grandmother was an artist. Um, and she in the early teens actually was trained as a commercial artist, but she also painted and um, and then later became a nurse. But I think that was a big influence. And my parents were always, you know, very much supportive of it. And, um, you know, I always I taught for years and uh, still do. And you still you think that with um, you went off for a minute, but you're back. Um, what you think is that you are um, you tell everybody you can keep going. You're you when people say continually and we've all heard this as artists, I can't draw a straight line and you go, yes, you can. You can be taught to do all these things or you have this innate ability from the time you're little. And I always had had that, you know, when I was little and in, you know, in fact, when I was early, early grade school, a uh, piece of mine was chosen for a museum. So I always knew I wanted to do that when I got into high school. It was one of those things. And when I was in high school that your college prep, you can't take four years of art. And I said, no, I will take four years of art and I'll just do other things in college. So, you know, I always, that, those were inspirations. And then going to college, um, I chose UC Davis because of the art faculty and, um, and Wayne Tebow primarily, who I did have for art history, um, was not able to get into my first quarter of classes. I literally, embarrassingly, fell into Robert Arneson's class. I wasn't, I, you know, I wasn't taught in high school. I didn't know who he was and just took every class I could, did independent studies and was just so totally inspired with the sculpture and the clay. And then, so he was huge, you know, in my life for that. And David Gihuli, um, and then later with my master's worked with Peter Vandenberg, but, and, you know, especially I was mentored by David Kohuli after, after um, class. And there was a whole group of people that were so, so I've been pretty fortunate. And then, you know, different people that you meet, the different artists, my, my studio mates. Um, I mentioned Malakias Montoya, who's, you know, an extraordinary gentleman that has influenced. And so there, you know, I, I'm in a fortunate situation. I think, you know, sometimes it's been, it was good going to Davis in the 70s, let me tell you. <laughs> Kathleen, I want to give you an opportunity to plug your website, and then I have one more question for you that is off the list, but I think you'll be able to answer it. Um, so do you want to tell us how to find out more about your work? And yeah, it um, on theartstudios.com, you know, we, we have that. And I have kathleensferris.com. And, um, and then, of course, The Verge. And there's some other things that, you know, that can be found. And then people can contact me. You know, I have my email on there so they can contact me if they're, they're interested in that too. Okay. You have one minute to answer this last question. I see this image and I see it behind you. The bok choy growing through the chair. Oh, can you see it? Yeah, I can see it. And I've, and I've studied yeah. it on your website. Tell me a little bit about the bok choy through the chair. That was, you know, on, um, do this is ceramic, all ceramic and airbrushed and um, underglazes. And um, the idea for that was, you know, the garden was growing indoors. And so then the guard, the bok choy came up and then I do have fish around it. I use fish in mine a lot for the journey, you know, for fertilization, for different things. And so when it evolved, I, you know, I was doing some things um, with, chairs, couches, people, and different things. And it just was one of these ideas that came to me. I think sometimes you have these, um, you know, you have a, uh, an inner thought and then all of a sudden. So anyway, I did a series on that where I was growing gardens and couches and every place else. And some of the thought is, are we going to have land enough to grow things? So, you all know, right. so I hit them now. Thank you so much. I've been thinking about that piece because I've been peeking over your shoulder sometimes. Oh. Okay. Well, I'm really glad we had this visit today. I think oh, it's well, time for me you. to move on to the next artist, but I hope you have a fun time with the rest of the virtual tour and that you get a chance to check out some of the other artists. I will. Thank you very much. And thanks for the opportunity.